Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you are. You're watching the Daily Dose of Hope, probably live on Facebook if you're watching right now. Maybe you're on YouTube a little later, and maybe you're watching in one of the many uh, watch parties that we'll have all around the world. So God bless you all for watching. This is the Daily Dose of Hope. It's a place that's designed to bring you hope. Hope of Jesus Christ, God the Son, of God the Father, and the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Spirit, we call him. And we are happy today to welcome all of our usual viewer, live viewers. Uh, James Cox is on right now. I think we've got uh, Carmen's on and Ati Hesasita. So welcome to all of you from Greenbrier Village in San Diego. Uh, again, I'm Chaplain Bob. I am a missionary here in the eastern parts of Metro Manila, uh, on the slopes of uh, the mountains, and uh, we're glad to be here with you today. Today we're going to be in John chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. A few months ago I preached uh, the whole uh, sermon, a whole sermon on this, um, when I did parts of the, if you remember, the parts of the I am, the seven I am statements of Jesus Christ. Well, today I thought it was appropriate for us to look at two of the verses, verses 14 and 15, that are so, so important in John 10. In fact, I think it's so important that today I'm guaranteeing that you're going to get hope out of this, that you're going to feel loved by Christ and by God because of these two verses. So let's bow our heads and let's um, ask God to bless our time together. Dear Lord, mighty Father, you are a great God. You are a powerful God. You're the, only, the one and only true God. There's no rival to you. There's no equal to you. Lord, we thank you that you called us and that we uh, responded to you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for being our friend and father in heaven. And Lord, as we examine this, uh, this passage of John chapter 10, Lord, uh, I pray that these words of Jesus Christ would ring true for us today, Lord, and that we would be able to share this with many people and not keep our faith to ourselves, but share it from the rooftops, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. And it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, the precious Holy Savior's name that we pray all of this. Amen. Okay, again, welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I'm Chaplain Bob, and today we're going to be uh, preaching to you from the book of John, the 10th chapter, the verses are 14 and 15. So let's take out our, our Bibles. I'm going to put my electronic Bible on the screen. And we are calling this the uh, this sermon today, I Am the Good Shepherd. Now, if you remember, uh, about a month and a half ago, I think it was, I uh, preached a series on the seven I Am statements of Jesus Christ. And in the Bible, there's actually more than seven. Uh, there's actually eight. Um, but we use the seven I am statements um, that, um, uh, for that series. And one of those statements was the I am the good shepherd. Okay. And today I'm taking a portion of that. And I'm going to point out to you some things that will bring you hope and bring you comfort today. Uh, on your daily uh, dose of hope here today. So let's go to John chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. And this is Jesus speaking, okay? I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Okay, so that's John chapter 14, uh, excuse me, John chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. So let's look at a few of the things here that are important for us to draw hope today, okay? I am the good shepherd. Now this is referring again um, to the sheepfold, or the sheepfold, I should say. And if you remember back to when I preached on the sheepfold, you know that the sheepfold is where the sheep go uh, typically at night or where they're housed maybe during the day to take a rest. Um, and the sheepfold typically has walls all the way around with a little opening, one single opening. And usually the shepherd will stay in the sheepfold 
uh, at the door. We'll guard the door by laying in the door so that no intruder can come in to get to the sheep. Okay? And Jesus uses this uh, symbolism to speak to uh, us, to us, the believers, okay? So he says, I am the good shepherd, okay? And I know my sheep. Now, the significance here is sheep know the voice of the shepherd because when the sheep are born, the very first voice that they hear, human voice, is of the shepherd. So if you're a farmer, you know this to be true. The sheep, the baby, the baby sheep, which I think they're called kids, the baby sheep know the very first voice they hear is the shepherd, and that's quite possibly the only voice they ever hear. But if they hear other human voices, they will always know the shepherd's voice. It's sweet to their ears. So Jesus uses this as a way for him to explain to us um, the communication. God so loved this world that he sent his only son to be our savior on the cross. But how do we respond to Jesus Christ as a savior? Jesus himself said, I am the way, I am the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. So how do we respond to Jesus' calling? How do we respond to God's calling? We respond because we know our shepherd's voice. See, when I became a believer way back when I was uh, 14 years old, I, of course, you know my story. I grew up Catholic. Um, then a friend started inviting me to a Christian church, and I started to realize that God was calling me during that time. And when I went to the Christian camp way up on the mountain, and that night I responded to God calling me. It was an overwhelming calling. God was impressing upon my heart, not audible voice, but he was impressing upon my heart. Come to me, come to me. I heard the voice in my heart that God was calling me to be a part of his family. Now, if this sounds weird or strange to you, it's probably because you're an unbeliever and you have not maybe been exposed to, uh, maybe you haven't been exposed to the truth yet, or maybe you haven't been exposed to uh, what the Bible says. But I'm, I'm taking this, John chapter 10, exactly from uh, one of the 27 books that's written in the New Testament. It's called the Gospel of John. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. We know him. It's natural for us to know him because he created us. God created you in his image long time ago. Long before your parents ever got together, God had you in mind already. And as the Father knows me, Jesus goes on to say, and as the Father knows me, so God the Father, God the Son, as the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. So he's saying, just as I know my Father and my Father knows me, the sheep know me. And they know my voice. And I am the good shepherd. And then he goes on to say something that's unbelievable. He says, I lay down my life for the sheep. And that's exactly what Jesus did at the cross. He see, he was previewing for his disciples. He was previewing for us. We, we, get, we read it years later, right? After the resurrection, after the, the, uh, the passion of the Christ, after, cross hung, after Christ hung on that cross. But during that time, he was previewing for his disciples what was about to take place. I laid down my life for the sheep. And what did he do for the sheep? He gave his life so that we could have life everlasting. 
And not only that, but he did what he said he was going to do. He said, I'm going to rise again. I'm going to be in the tomb for a few days, but don't worry. Take heart. I'm going to rise again. I'm going to overcome the grave. And then the grave was found empty. And then Jesus returns again, and he spends about 40 days appearing to the disciples. And this is historically recorded and biblically recorded. Yesterday in the daily, uh, in the Hope Hill Sunday morning gathering, I talked about the, uh, and I hope if you haven't seen that yet, you tune in. Um, I, I talked about the, the family of Jesus Christ. And there's irrefutable evidence that there are seven siblings in the uh, earthly family of Jesus Christ. Mary and Joseph had seven children, including Jesus Christ. So Jesus has six half-brothers and sisters, possibly more sisters we don't know. We only know that the Bible says plural for sisters. So we have irrefutable evidence about that. Then we have irrefutable evidence that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Look at John 3.16 on the screen. For God so loved the world, he gave that he gave his only son, his only begotten son, the Bible says, that whoever should believe in him should not perish, but instead have everlasting life. So what God, what Jesus, God the Son said in John chapter 10, is also recorded in John chapter 3 when Jesus it, who speaks John 3.16, he's talking to Nicodemus, who's a Jewish leader, and he says, my father loved the world so much that he gave me, gave the only son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in me, Jesus Christ, should not perish, but instead they're going to have everlasting life. So imagine... The good shepherd is laying down his life for you. The gift doesn't stop giving. It's not like it has an expiration date on it. Well, in a way it does. If you die without Jesus, that's the expiration date. If you don't respond to his calling, that's the expiration date. And you're certainly entitled to your decision. You have your own free will, your own free choice. But if Jesus is calling you, if the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart, my recommendation would be for you to respond to the Holy Spirit, respond to that calling, respond to Jesus Christ. And it's simple. All you have to do is say, Lord, I believe that you're the good shepherd. I hear your voice. I know who you are. I trust you as my Savior, my one and only Savior, the Savior of the world. And I want your free gift of salvation. I want to partake in your kingdom, Lord. I want to turn from my sins, and I want to follow you. That's good news, people. That's good news. Stop delaying the decision. Stop delaying the response. It's time now. You never know. Tomorrow you may wake up, but the next day you may not. You never know. I heard a story today of somebody, uh, actually I heard a couple stories. One is of a story of my former student. Her whole family got COVID. Now they're young, they're strong, and um, they're recovering. But then I heard another story of, a, of another person that I know from afar that has COVID that's older, elderly. What happens if they don't make it? Well, the Bible says very clearly, if they don't make it and their name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, mentioned in Revelation chapter 20, if their name is not mentioned, is not written in that Lamb's book of life, they do not see the kingdom of God. Instead, they will go into what's called the lake of fire. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. It's not my job to scare you into a relationship with Jesus. That's not my intention. 
But Jesus is very clear. He says in John 3, 17, the, cha- the verse right after this verse that's on the screen, he says, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. I came to save the world. If you think you need a savior today, if you finally have come to that realization, respond to Jesus Christ. He wants to give you hope in a future. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you for your your book of John. We thank you for this chapter, the 10th chapter, um, where we learn that you are the good shepherd indeed, and that we know your voice. We know you. Lord, and we know that you are willing to lay down your life. Not only are you willing, but you did it. And then you overcame the grave. And you are living, Lord. You're a living Savior. Thank you so much. Lord, if by chance there's anybody online right now that's watching that wants to respond to this good news, Lord, it's very simple, Lord. All they have to do is respond to your calling. They just have to say, I believe, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are the good shepherd. I believe you and I trust you with all of my heart and all the faith that I understand, Lord. I believe you. That's all. Lord, thank you so much for those that will be saved because of this message. Thank you for using me and Mary Ann uh, to produce this, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your care, Lord. And I pray for anybody right now that's facing chaos or trouble or illness, Lord, that you'd strengthen them during this time and give them the hope that they need. Lord, send the Holy Spirit to them and call them to your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. You know, during this passage of John chapter 10, Jesus talks about who tries to get into the sheepfold. And you know who tries to get into the sheepfold? It's the thief. And Jesus says that the thief only comes to what? Steal, kill, and and destroy. So who tries to get into the sheepfold is the evil one. And you don't want the evil one getting into your sheepfold. This is another reason why when God calls you, respond. The maker of heaven and earth is calling you to his side. And if he is, then respond to him. Respond to his gift. He wants to be your shepherd. Okay, if you have more questions or you need prayer requests, you look on the screen that's next to me over here. I don't think you can see my finger. There it is. Um, Go to Hope Heals Ministry on Facebook. Hope Heals Ministry. Just search it. You'll see the Daily Dose of Hope. You can write me a private message. You can leave your prayer requests there. Also, if you want to see this video a little later today, go to our YouTube page and subscribe to Hope Heals International Ministry. We've got a lot of content on on YouTube right now, and then it's easy for you to share it with your friends. If you know somebody that needs to see this message today, share it in a uh, marketplace uh, group or, or put it in the different groups that are out there. Turn it into a watch party so that many people can encounter Jesus Christ today. Okay, everybody, it's been a pleasure to be with you again. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. It seems like I always say that, but it's true. You guys are um, faithful people, and um, my job is to just encourage you through God's Word. And um, I just want to let you know that at least uh, you know that we're here um, for your benefit and for the benefit of God so that He gets all the credit, not for our own benefit. Okay, everybody, God bless you. Take care, and we'll see you again tomorrow. at. uh, We're on tomorrow at 9.15 a.m. local time. My son's back in school. No more typhoons, although it's a little bit gray outside. Um, We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye, everybody.